Okay, I want to talk about um, doing synthetic division with irrational and imaginary uh, zeros. And we're going to start with an irrational. So the number 2 plus the square root of 3 is irrational, meaning it can't be expressed as a fraction. It's a never-ending decimal. It is a, um, a square root that cannot be simplified. And uh, that doesn't mean it's not a real number. I mean, it's the square root of 3 is, I think, 1.7 or so. So 2 plus the square root of 3 is about 3.7, which means this polynomial would cross the axis at about 3.7. Um, the fact, just like with imaginaries, you have to know is that um, these come in conjugate pairs. So if 2 plus the square root of 3 is a 0, then 2 minus the square root of 3 is a 0. And I want to start with taking... Um, synthetic division taking out this 0 of 2 plus the square root of 3. The rules for the synthetic are exactly the same. It will look a little different because 2 plus the square root of 3 is a binomial. It's in two parts, so we're going to have to multiply some things out, but it's the exact same process. We're going to start by dropping this 1 straight down. Then we multiply by 2 plus the square root of 3. And now we add, just like we always do in synthetic, when you add negative 7 to 2 plus the square root of 3, you get negative 5 plus the square root of 3. All right, we're adding like terms, so the negative 7 pairs up with the 2 to get negative 5, and the square root of 3 just um, tags along. Now this is the first part where the multiplying is going to take a little extra work. Um, so just off to the side, I need to multiply 2 plus the square root of 3 by negative 5 plus the square root of 3. And that result is going to be my next spot in, in the table. When I multiply this out, I get negative 10. Um, remember, I'm uh, foiling if you prefer that memory trick. Uh, plus 2 square root of 3 minus 5 square root of 3 uh, plus 3. I'm just going to put that right over here. I ran out of space. So overall, I get negative 7 minus 3 times the square root of 3. And that's the result that goes here. Okay, so um, the process keeps going. I multiply, I write down the result, now I add negative 4 minus 3 square root of 3. And again, I need to multiply. Um, I'm going to pause and fill some of this out just for the sake of time. Be right back. Okay, so I've um, completed most of this table. The red shows the next multiplication, and then the yellow on the side shows the final multiplication. What you'll notice on the last one is things needed to get pretty simple. I ended up with 40 minus 30 makes 10, and 20 square root of 3 minus 20 square root of 3 makes 0, which gave me a 10 in the last spot in this chart. Remember, if 2 plus the square root of 3 is truly a 0, then that means it should divide in evenly, and that's what happened. So the chart's kind of ugly for a minute, um, but we do end up with that zero that tells us we were correct, and 2 plus the square root of 3 truly was a zero. Now typically what we do after we take out a root is we go through these the, this line on the bottom and we just put you know x to the third, x squared, x in a constant. But if you're going to do synthetic on... A, uh, on an irrational root like this, you need to immediately go through and take out the conjugate pair, which is 2 minus the square root of 3, from those remaining terms, because it's not going to look right until you do. So we're going to do the same process. Drop down the 1. I'm going to multiply by 2 minus the square root of 3. And you'll see what happens in, on this time through is now when I add, the square root parts are going to cancel each other out. I get negative 5 plus 2 is negative 3. Now I multiply that by 2 minus the square root of 3. And I'm going to get negative 6 plus 3 times the square root of 3. And what happens again? Cancel. Because this time, because these two things really are zeros, I should end up with a nice quadratic function after I cancel this out. I get negative 10 here when I add, then I get negative 20 plus 10 times the square root of 3, which is exactly the opposite of what I had, which gives me a 0. My 0 is now over one spot because each time I take, take a term out, 
uh, take a zero out, I drop my degree by one. So the remaining thing, the remaining quadratic is x squared minus 3x minus 10. Okay, so um, we'll deal with that in a minute. Let's figure out, um, you know, typically if I divide it out of 4, I would do x minus 4 as a factor. Technically, x minus 2 plus the square root of 3 is a factor, and x minus 2 minus the square root of 3 is a factor. But typically, I don't want to write them like that because that's not really factored if it's got that square root of 3 in it. When we say the word factor, we usually mean factor nicely or factor out evenly, not with irrational answers like squared to 3. So we need to know the quadratic that, is, that comes from multiplying x minus 2 plus the square root of 3 and x minus 2 minus the square root of 3. Well, if 2 plus and minus the square root of 3 are the zeros, we can kind of use our, our trick to get the um, coefficients. It's going to be x squared. If I add these two zeros together, I get 4, right? This plus this equals 4. If I add those together, I get 4. And then remember, the b part is the opposite of that. Whatever I get when I add my zeros together, take the opposite of it. That's the b coefficient, the coefficient of x. When I multiply these two things together, um, technically I have to foil that out. I'll kind of squeeze that in over here in red. Um, when I multiply 2, 2 plus the square root of 3 by 2 minus the square root of 3, I get 4. And then minus 2 square root of 3 plus 2 square root of 3 cancel because these two things are conjugates. Minus 3 because the square root of 3 cancel to make a 3, so I just get a 1. That means this C term is just plus 1. Okay, so you can do that to kind of quickly multiply out. Um, and then we have to check and see, does this other quadratic factor, and I believe in this case it does, we need two factors of negative 10 that add up to negative 3, which are going to be negative 5 and positive 2. So the main focus of this problem was to do the synthetic division, but the whole problem is to factor, so that's what it will factor to. All right. This, this squared term over here comes from the, the two um, irrational zeros that we knew. These two terms come from the quadratic that we get after we factor those two out. Okay, so let's do something similar. We want to solve this equation. Remember, solutions and factors are basically the same thing. Um, this, this question's purpose is to find solutions. The last question was to factor. But really, if you know the solutions, you know the factors. You know, if, if negative 1 is a solution, which was the hint, um, x plus 1 is a factor. So these two things basically mean the same thing. But again, the focus of this question is to factor out 2 plus i because one of the solutions was 2 plus i, which, by the way, we instantly should know that another solution is 2 minus i. And I want to get through this synthetic division with an imaginary term just to show you that process. All right, it's going to be kind of similar than uh, similar to when we worked with square roots, but now we're just working with the imaginary number i. So I'm going to drop my 1, and I'm going to multiply, 2 plus i. Now I'm going to add negative 6 plus 2 is negative 4, and the i doesn't have a like term, so it just comes along. Now I've got a FOIL out. Um, you, you might be able to, you know, if you want to start trying to FOIL these in your head, um, you can. It's a little bit to keep track of. I would suggest writing it out to the side on a scrap piece of paper or just on the side of your paper to make sure that you get this next term right. Um, if you don't end up with a zero at the end, you'll know you made a mistake somewhere, but it's going to save you some time if you just don't make that mistake in the first place. When I FOIL, I get negative 8 plus 2i minus 4i plus i squared. Now, this last term should always con combine with this first term because it will involve i squared. And remember, i squared is negative 1. So I get negative 9 minus 2i for my overall multiplication. Okay, now I combine like terms. 11 minus 9 is 2 minus 2i. I would encourage you right now to pause and finish this question. Um, 
you can go ahead and divide out the 2 minus i after you get done dividing out the 2 plus i. I'm going to pause and fill in some, but try this on your own and then resume. Okay, so here they are filled in this first round, factoring out the 2 plus i. I end up with my 0, so I know I did it right. Um, confession, when I was paused there and working this out, I missed this negative sign right here. Um, I made that a plus. I got to the end. I didn't have a zero, and I knew that something had gone wrong, so I erased it and went back. My point in pointing that horrible mistake out is if you try to do these foiling in your head, it's kind of hard to keep track, so write it down on the side, and you'll save yourself some time. Now, um, imaginary solutions come in conjugate pairs. As soon as you divide out 2 plus i, turn right back around and divide out 2 minus i. Alright, I would, as usual, encourage you to pause and try to divide out this 2 minus i, see what you get, and um, then resume. I'm going to um, do this one with you. This one doesn't take as much time because it's the one that kind of cleans it up and makes it look nice again. 1 times 2 minus i is 2 minus i. Add those together, I get negative 2. My i's are going to be gone now because they're all going to cancel each other out. Negative 2 times... 2 minus i is negative 4 plus 2i. i's are going to cancel, and I get negative 2. All right, each time on this step, these i's should cancel each other out. Uh, next, negative 2 times 2 is negative 4 plus 2i. Those cancel. I'm left with a 1. And then I get 1 times 2 minus i is 2 minus i. It's the exact opposite, which gives me a 0. Now, um, I am left with, in this case, a cubic. I started with a fifth degree polynomial, and now I'm left, I've taken two of those degrees out, I'm left with x cubed minus 2x squared minus 2x plus 1, and I want to know where this equals 0. Um, so I'm gonna, it's going to take me to the next screen to finish this thing out, but we have a couple options. You can either search the um, possible rational roots are some factor of this one over some factor of this one. So it wouldn't take us too long to search, but the question told us that negative one is a zero. So to finish this question up, I'm going to um, take out that negative one and then wrap it up. So I'll do that on the next slide. Okay, so far we've taken out the zeros, two plus i, two minus i, and I'm gonna take out the zero negative one. I was told that that was a zero, so I know I can divide it out. I'm going to drop the 1, I'm going to multiply and get negative 1, I'm going to add and get negative 3, I'm going to multiply and get positive 3, add and get 1, multiply and get negative 1, and 0. Okay, so once I take that 0 out of negative 1, I'm left with x squared minus 3x plus 1, and I want to know where that is equal to 0. And if, in order for this to factor, if it's going to have nice, neat, um, zeros, rational zeros, then this should factor. I cannot think of any two factors of positive 1 that add up to negative 3, which means the dreaded quadratic formula is our only hope. So, negative b is a 3, plus or minus the square root. b squared is 9, minus 4 times a times c, all over 2a. There we go. 3 plus or minus the square root of 9 minus 4 is 5, all over 2. So this, this fifth degree has some interesting zeros. It has one conjugate pair of imaginaries. It has one nice rational negative 1 zero. And the last two zeros are 3 plus and minus the square root of 5 over 2. It's got quite a variety, but those are the five solutions. Fifth degree polynomial, fifth degree... Um, polynomial set equal to zero is going to have five solutions, and there they are. So my challenge um, is for you to sketch a graph of this thing, including its intercepts. These sketches are pretty light. We just focus on the intercepts and the end behavior. But try to sketch this thing down at the bottom, and we can look at that at a further date. All right. Hope you've enjoyed this synthetic division, the really hard types.